Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio. It starts now. This is the Clay Edwards Show. I am, of course, Clay Edwards. Shocker. <laughs> Good morning to everybody. I hope y'all are doing well. It's uh, had a nice ride in here this morning. Traffic wasn't too bad. So, uh, you know, for all this talk of a heat wave, it actually hasn't felt too bad in the mornings. There's some mornings when you walk outside and that humidity is just so disrespectful. It just, it'll smack you straight up across the face. You're like, oh, what in the world? You're sticky before you even get to your car. Hadn't had that the last few mornings. So uh, I think that rain yesterday actually helped. Um, I keep hearing that we're in a, in a drought of sorts and not getting enough rain, but last couple of weeks, it feels like all it has done is rained. I mean, especially in the afternoons. You won't get a complaint out of me. You, you really won't. This time of year, I will take some rain. All right, let's get this party started. The Mack Hike Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Flowood phone line is 601-879-0002 if you want to chime in. And I've got a question of the day I want everybody's answer on. Uh, it can be an underlying current for the next two hours. Uh, you can call in at any time if you think of something. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute. All uh, right. It, it, you can also text it on the Guns and Gear text line. Text me your answer, your opinion, your thoughts, whatever. It's a, it's a, it is a uh, it is a free for all today. I got some things I want to talk about, but you know, look, you guys are a bigger part of this show as I am. So, uh, if there's something that's on your mind, you want to get off your chest, by all means, the Guns and Gear text line is seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. One more time, seven six nine two four one nineteen forty four. I also have my Twitter account pulled up here on the computer screen at the in the studio, and I am simply at Save JXN on the Twitter. I don't check Facebook too much throughout the show. It, it's just, the comments are a little complicated to follow sometimes. It only shows most relevant. It, pain in the butt. But uh, Twitter and the text line are your best forms of. Uh, texting type communication or social media whatnot and then of course the phone line if you want to call in so i was thinking about something on the way in this morning you know we talk a lot on this show over the last year or so about civil war is civil war coming and i saw something last night that made me realize the civil war is here we're in a civil war right now it's not kinetic you know we're not there's actually we're not actually out necessarily fighting each other in in the streets which i wouldn't have a problem with that honestly <laughs> can we can we can we can we fight on can we civil war on the weekends anyway uh, charles barkley of all people is what really made this thought trigger well between that and the abortion billboards popping up around town but charles barkley was at an event the other night at a bar he was emceeing it or something i, I just saw the clip on whitlock show yesterday and he gets on stage and he says, if you're LGBTQ or trans, I love you. And if anybody gives you crap, you come get me. And I'm just, it's this obsession with virtue signaling to, to that community that's nauseating to me. The same community that's trying to teach this crap, this sex crap to your kids so on and so forth, you know, that we fight this fight every day on this show and on this across this station. I, I'm sorry, if somebody's giving them crap, I'm going to let somebody give it to them. They probably started it anyway. Let's, let's just be honest. They probably started it anyway. So don't run your mouth. Don't start no crap. There won't be no crap, as they like to say over on the south side. At least they did when I was growing up. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. If you don't want to get punched in it. But that got me to thinking about. We, we, we kind of won the abortion battle. I mean, unfortunately, babies are still being murdered in other states. But you can't take your foot off the gas. And that's what I will give the Democrats credit from this standpoint. And Kim Wade says this a lot. When Democrats have power, they go for generational change, generational uh, bills and laws. 
when Republicans have have control, we just piddle paddle along and just try to be the brakes to slow the Democrats down. And this is one of the things I told Michael Guest sitting in there with him last Monday when I had the opportunity to sit down was I want to see as a citizen, I want to see generational bills and laws passed. I get it. Again, we, as a Mississippi resident, I have to be happy with what happened with Roe versus Wade being Dobbs versus Jackson, Roe versus Wade, whatever you want to call it, being overturned. As an American, I'm disappointed that you can still go kill babies in other places. I saw last night that I can't believe I'm going to say these words on the radio. I saw last night that they're talking about putting Planned Parenthoods in schools in California. In 2023, we're talking, well, 2022, I'm sorry. We're talking about them putting abortion clinics in schools. You know, one of the other things that they, they've sold the pink house, the murder house in Fondren, it has been sold as it will not reopen. And the owner is moving her murder, her murder shop of horrors to, uh, was it Los Crucis, New Mexico, Las Crucis, New Mexico. And I, I can't imagine what they would turn this house into, but we won that. We won this round, but, or, you know, if we're going to use the war analogies, we've won the battle. We have not won the war because all they're doing now is doubling down on converting your kids to trans and gay and everything else. And I, I, I say it before I say it again, I love some hellfire and brimstone with my church service. I, I do. I love the old school, old Testament stuff. The gay stuff has never bothered me, and and I, I'm not going to waver on that. It, it's still if you want to, if that's what you want to do, and that's and that is sort of a battle you're okay with trying to sell God on when you die. That is on you. I have my own sins. I'm not here to judge you for that. This 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 I can't talk this morning. This LGBTQIA plus pedophile BLM Marxist agenda stuff. I, this I have a problem with, and I will fight you to the death over this. And that is what we are currently in a civil war on. I would love y'all's opinions on that stuff. Because every time I turn around, somebody's sending me a video clip of this, a video clip of that. And sometimes I have to not watch it. And I want y'all to always send me that stuff because I, I may be in the mood, I may not, but it pisses me off so bad sometimes that I'll let it ruin my day thinking about something I have no control over that's happening in California or Michigan or wherever else at some school board meeting. But just knowing that people are clapping and, and cheering this crap on and thinking the, what are they doing to their children? I mean, I, I sure hope that more conservatives are having babies than Democrats if nothing else, I mean, there's a part of me that says if they weren't messing with the kids and trying to get teenagers to lob their wee wees off and, and take hormone blockers and all that, there's a part of me that says just continue to let these people take themselves out of the gene pool. Be as be as gay as you want. Cut, you know, once you turn 18 or I would really say 25 is probably a solid number. I mean, I was still making bad decisions till my mid thirties, but I'll be 45 in two weeks, three weeks, August 17th, you know, so I, I I'm on about an 11 year run of pretty good decision making, but I, I, I still fall off the wagon every now and then I make a good, bad decision. But, um, it, it, you know, it come 25, if you decided you don't want your wee wee no more and you want to whack it off, well, you know what? I mean, you're, you're an adult, you're a full fledged adult by 25, you know, Take yourself out the gene pool. I mean, you're going to be the last generation. There will not be another person with your last name or your genetics. And it, it, if you're where it stops, you know, that that's cool with me. That is cool with me. But you don't deserve to have the right to go to push this crap on children. Impressionable minds. We were all impressionable. Hell, 
I remember growing up in South Jackson, man, I wanted to hang with the older, older guys so much and, you know, have, you know, be respected. That's why I understand what's going on in Jackson with these younger, younger kids looking up to these old, uh, I say older guys. It could just be a two or three year difference. But when you're 15 and somebody's 17 or 18, that's a world of difference at that point in your life. It's not like now, <laughs> you know, I'm 40. I'll be 45 next month. Crystal just turned 42 last week, I think, you know. Three to two, two and a half, three year difference. But I, you know, I, I was very impressionable. I, I would have done anything those people said. If I saw, they didn't have to tell me to do something. If I saw them doing something, I'd want to do it within the, within the, within the concept of, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Context within the context of what I thought was cool at the time. You know, whatever it was, cruising up and down McDowell, trying to get in fights, chase girls, you know, whatever. So imagine being some loner kid, you know, the, the opposite sex not attracted to you, or maybe you've done going down a TikTok rabbit hole or or something, and you've landed on these trans teachers, and you got a trans teacher in your, you know, somebody that listens to you. And uh, you, next thing you know, you want to wipe your wee-wee off. You're convinced that... And I'm just using this from the male perspective. I know there's the female perspective, too, where they're pretending to be guys and then they can get pregnant and they say they're trans men that got pregnant. No, you're a chick that looks like a dude that got knocked up. That You're not even gay. Oh, that, that's, a, that, that's a lot. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, I got our question of the day queued up. I think y'all are going to enjoy it. We'll kind of cut the tension a little bit. If you want to comment on any of this, do you feel like we're in a civil war? I do. I think we're already in it. Uh, will it get kinetic? Uh, you know, I believe it will. I believe it should have during the summer of love. I believe we should have gone and fought back in a lot of those BLM attacks on our nation. We should have. Uh, when Kyle Rittenhouse did. Look at him now. Set for the rest of his life. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. You know, that's what we do here at WYAB. You won't hear these kind of conversations on any other talk radio show in Mississippi. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you won't hear these conversations on any other talk radio show in America. That's actually broadcast over the airwaves. Now, I know Alex Jones and InfoWars gets uh, piped out in some places, but gosh, could you imagine having to be the, hit the edit button on that? Because he cusses a lot. <laughs> having to sit there and just beep, beep. <laughs> hey, look, man, this segment is going to be brought to you by Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters. Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters in Pearl wants to help you determine who to use when you're seeking roof repair or work on your gutters. You need to choose a qualified, certified company that has a local brick and mortar building, a company that has been in business longer than two years and offers a warranty. Complete Exteriors has a 4.9 Google review and has been in business for over 16 years. Complete Exteriors, quality without compromise. You can check them out online at CompleteExteriorsMS.com. I went by last week and visited with the Complete Exteriors team. And, uh, first time I got a chance to go check out the facility there right on Highway 80 and Pearl across from, uh, I, I always call it Big Ten, but it's the Rick Pro Truck bought the building, so it's not Big Ten anymore. Anyway, right across from there on Highway 80. Uh, great, great crew of people. It was nice to see everybody there. Stop by, see them. Tell them you heard it on the Clay Edwards Show. It'll help us and it'll help you. And uh, these people are giving back to the community. And we got some big stuff coming up with them, uh, big big fundraisers and stuff. I don't want to give it all away, but we're really excited about it. Um, on the Guns and Gear text line, uh, somebody texted in and said, Clay, what is the percentage of the LGBTQ in America? And I was like, you know, that's a good question. I thought I think it's 3% is the last number I saw. People that identify as LGBTQIA plus pedophile. And the, the number... As of February 17th of this year, according to USA Today, is 7.1% of U.S. adults now identify as LGBTQ new poll shows. And I'll dig it up in the next break, and because I've gone over it before on this show. 
if you break it down amongst like your generations, generation uh your baby boomers, your Gen Xers, your millennials, your Gen Y, your Zoomers, whatever, it increases like twofold, like or one single fold. It multiplies, you know, from two percent to four percent to six. You know, as, as high as you go. And I think right now, as far as like the current generation, the Zoomers, as they're called, I think they're like ten percent of them. Um, identify as some version of the alphabet mafia. All right, look, we got a couple calls here on the Mac Hiker Flowwood phone line. First up, we've got Josh. Hey, Josh, good morning. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Hold on, let me get the radio piece up because I was listening to you on that too. Hey. Hey. You there? Yes. Hey, I was going to point out that uh, my my daughter had a call. Oh on oral communications and they came across with that gay stuff about they had a gay kid leaving and one of her grades was you had to write a goodbye to the gay kid and it had to be you know somewhat some kind of acceptance thing and how much you appreciated what they did or why they were there and she skipped that day so she should i I mean you know again you can be accepting you don't have to run around uh, protesting and, and being rude to every gay person you meet, you know, I'm going to treat them just like I treat everybody else. Um, oh, yeah, but, but on, on the same token, I shouldn't have to write some speech about how great you are. Exactly. You know, what, what have you really done? Have some merit to it, but not just because you made a decision in life to do whatever you're doing like that. Write a speech about me. Right. <laughs> and on the other token, on that having to do with you know, this, this generation and a, and a lot that are younger than you and I, I, they've grown up, and again, they've had the phones and stuff. You and I had to have a quarter in our pocket sometimes to call for help. You know what I mean? We had pay phones. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm still scarred from them, from, from them adding uh, a dime to it and going up to 35 cents. Right. So with that, I mean, having to do what, you know, or, or be accepted or even – go with the status quo i've never had that problem all of my my grandparents i mean like i told you before my grandma lived to be 106 she was born october 4th 1910 so i spent a lot of time out there again gardening hunting fishing you know in the woods and you know my grandfather again a b-24 pilot flight officer and a prisoner of war in world war ii i grew up around world war ii vets vietnam vets and when my parents had me again, they were in their thirties, well into their thirties. So uh, I don't know if that's something that these these younger generations being taught. But my mother always taught me, don't be like everybody else, and be be wary of who your friends are because if one of them robs a bank and you're in the car, you'll be the same one going to jail. So we, we got wisdom with that for sure. Absolutely, brother. You know, don't don't follow people off a cliff. And that's what I was saying earlier about being impressionable, man. I was impressionable out out doing dumb stuff, breaking in cars, you know, everything else that the that the older crowd was doing and and cuz I thought that's what I needed to do to be cool. That's what they were doing. Let me follow that and you know, it all the, the context matters and because I I thought, you know, being a little white want to be gangbanger growing up in South Jackson in the 90s was what was cool. But, you know, if you grow up in this day and age, you may be on TikTok and you think being trans is cool. And I think corporal punishment is another big thing that I don't see a lot. Now, my kids know when that belt clears the loops, it's about too late. And I I don't mind saying it on radio. My mama, I remember smarting off at the dinner table one time, and I didn't think it was that big a deal. And my mama would pop you in the mouth, and she called it giving you a mouthful of diamonds. And she would. She would straight, you know, and then tell you to put the taste back in your mouth, finish your dinner, and then you go ahead and go to your room and settle down for the night. And that's what you did. But, you know, these days you want to get challenged. Uh, the shows will tell you how dumb your parents are and how they don't know anything. And, again, it, it's promoting a lot of this. And, and then they'll tell you technology. Technology doesn't doesn't influence them, but yet at what point is a video game where you're stealing cars like that Grand Theft Auto, slapping hookers, going going to these things? And again, while parents are chasing the dollar, they're not watching what their kids watch. So while they chase the dollar and they put their kids on these machines that tells them, you know, you can go shoot up something or fight against somebody in this in this other video game, and then you can curse and use profanity. 
and y'all can go at it. And then, you know, again, to heal them and everything's okay at the end, they go up and, like, touch each other and they power up or whatever. But that's not how it happens in real life, for sure. Yep. All right, Josh, I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Have a good one. All right, uh, let's jump straight to this other phone call here. We got Miss Sylvia, I believe. Sylvia, you there? Yes, I am. I apologize. I didn't know you had him on as well. Oh, no, all good. I just Okay, good. I just wanted to say, in Scripture, the Lord does give instructions for uh, children and how we're supposed to treat them and what, and what we're supposed to do. Now, the first verse I'm going to say is Proverbs 22, 6. Direct your children on the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. So we are responsible to teach our children the Word of God. And if we're teaching our children the Word of God, hopefully the whole intention is so that they won't leave, and if they do, they will return. That's a promise. And they will also be, you'll also be counteracting what the society wants to start to teach our children now, like critical race theory. And the other one says, children are a gift from God. They are a reward for him, from him, excuse me. Psalms 127, verse 3. We need to to keep our children, treat our children as if they are just precious, wonderful people. And remember that Jesus blessed children who came to him. And so it's the responsibility of the parents to really teach their children what the Word of God has to say. And you still, parents still have wonderful influence on their kids. Even in the public school, a parent can still have more influence on their child than that teacher. Yeah, I mean, look, when I was pl- kid, plenty, okay. plenty of great kids, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, I just wanted to say this, plenty of great kids still graduate from public schools, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, there's, there, there's some great parents out there doing good work in spite of a terrible public education system. That is true. They are graduating, but in Jackson Public School, the average uh, person who's graduating from there barely can read on the third grade level. They just pass them along and just pass them along collect the state money, but parents should be more involved with that, especially in the Jackson Public School system. And my last thing I wanted to say is that the Lord tells children to obey their parents. And if you are teaching your child to obey you, that child, when they grow up, will uh, appreciate authority. They won't get uh, smart off to a police officer like some children do. And your last caller was talking about uh, the people you hang out with. Scripture talks about that, too. It says, be uh, good morals. Uh, oh, I have it mixed up. It says, bad company corrupts good morals. So that's another thing teach, uh, parents could teach. And my mother believed in spanking. Yes, she did. That woman was crazy. Yeah, man, look, she, 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 Shelby, I, I, Shelby used to whoop the crap out of me. That's my mama's name. She, uh, I remember one day we were riding down the road. And I've told this story on here before, and I called my sister a, 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 a BIT, uh, you, you know, the rest. And, yeah. and <laughs> ma'am, I was in the front passenger seat, and my mama came over, and I'm pretty sure with her left hand all the way across her body and found the right side of my cheek. I, I don't know how, oh, yeah. she's like, go, go gadget arm. And man, I, I think that was the last time I ever called my sister a name other than by her first name. Well, I know that. You did not sit directly diagonal to my mother. Because if you did, you got it. If I, you did something wrong, I remember. I remember another time we were right across from Southside Assembly of God, right over there on, a, on Terry Road. I mean, not Terry Road, Raymond Road, right by the Dairy Queen. Uh I got. I may have my South Sides mixed up. It's the smaller of the two. It's the maybe South Side Baptist. I think that's it. Anyway, I remember being right there. And I said something, and my mom pulled over off the road onto the sidewalk, <laughs> snatched a snatched a um a, a switch out of a tree and tore my butt up. So I mean, it, look, I mean, I, I guess I could make the argument that a corporal punishment punishment might not have helped because I still found ways to screw up as bad as I possibly could. But I guess I could I could be cup half full guy and say that um imagine how bad I would have been had I not thought about the corporal punishment. So that right. is a true statement. All right, and one other thing, and yes. I'm done. Corporal punishment is biblical. Proverbs thirteen twenty four. 
Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline them. But anyway, that was all I wanted to say. You have a great day. You have a blessed one, too. Thank you. Well, you know, with that being said, I may go back and beat my kid this afternoon. It's because I love you. It's because I love you. This hurts me worse than it hurts you. She's like, I'm 20 years old. What are you doing? <laughs> all right. I, I, I was late on getting my question of the day out. We'll lead with it next. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Say, welcome back to The Clay Edwards Show. This segment is going to be brought to you by the Raymond Farmers Market. Man, it is Tuesday. They're back open. They're closed on Sundays and Mondays. It's Tuesday. They're open for lunch and dinner tonight. Get out there and try one of the great menu items, all of their their sides, their appetizers are all genuine Mississippi products, fresh, made from scratch, phenomenal. The fried green tomatoes, the fried pickles, the onion rings, or the die for, all raised uh, right here in Mississippi. You can uh, try one of their burgers, sandwiches. Uh, again, they're fresh made, fresh made sides from scratch. They got the firecracker chicken sandwich it's spicy grilled looks phenomenal and uh, they have a nine ounce ribeye steak sandwich and look man their ribeyes are all 100 percent grass fed no gmos i mean the real deal holy field from right here in central mississippi raised farm to table so you can't beat that and uh, hey their french fries this matters their french fries are a whole potato going through the potato slicer fried and served to your table I don't care what anybody else says, best French fries in the game. Love them. Go check them out. And, of course, Thursday is barbecue day. Friday is catfish night. Saturday is steak night. They got the the 10-ounce filet, the 16-ounce ribeye, and, of course, the three-pound, big enough to feed three, tomahawk ribeye. So big they had to send it out on a cutting board. You can't beat that, my friends. And uh, so go see them, RaymondFarmersMarket.com, or go follow them on Facebook at Raymond Farmers Market. And we're going to have them on the show here soon. They're going to bring some food up here and let us try it on the air. And uh, look, steak in the morning. Sign me up, brother. Bring some eggs, though. Will, Holly, bring some eggs with you. <laughs> All right, so my question of the day is, what is your – I want to make sure I word this properly uh, because we can take it either direction. It can be – this can be funny, and we can just pick the best blunder, or we can take it serious, and you can say, what is the worst mistake that was made? Well, we can do both. (laughs) Joe Biden, what's his biggest screw up since becoming president? Is it something very serious like the Afghan war, the the Afghan pullout? Or is it something, uh, is it Hunter Biden? Is it him falling off a bicycle, shaking ghost hands more than once? I mean, just shaking imaginary hands. You know, what is your... Is it making up words? What is your f- most memorable Joe Biden blunder since he's became uh, the illegitimate president of the United States of America? Give me a call on the Mack Hike of Flowood phone line at 601-879-0002 or shoot me a text to the Guns and Gear text line at 769-241-1944. And speaking of the Mack Hike of Flowood phone line, we've got Derek on hold. Hey, Derek, you're on the air, brother. Hey, my, hey, what's going on, buddy? The biggest screw up, in my opinion, was when he uh, abandoned those troops in Afghanistan, and um, the way he pulled out made us look like chumps. And you know, it, it, it begs the question: Why the heck were we even over there if this is what you were going to do? Agreed. I mean, I think that's the biggest tactical blunder. Um, and then there's the funny stuff like falling off his bicycle. That was epic. I mean, that's become the greatest meme of all time, at least until then, the next one. And then let's not forget. He talked. He, he made all that talk about about the the Saudi clown prince. I don't call him a clown prince. The clown prince over there. Yeah, you over there fist bumping him and big. Yeah, had to go, go there and kiss the ring. Yeah, you know. Listen, man. I don't know why the United States wastes their time being allies with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is not our friend. I don't know why we got to be beholden to a bunch. Of, uh, I almost said it. To a bunch of Arabs. I'm sorry. I was about to say the other word. Terrorists? I to say the, R, the RH word. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, my apologies. But why do we got to be, why do we got to kowtow to a bunch of Arabs? You know, and then, right, 
always hear people in the United States, especially these stupid rappers, oh, man, we're going to hang out in Dubai, Dubai. You know, Elf, the, the uh, United Arab Emirates, and Elf Dubai, because the reason why that place is like that is because of America. we've moved American money over there, American manufacturing, American business. You understand? We made the, uh, the, e, the um, UAE rich. We made Dubai rich. But we got nice stuff right here in the United States. I don't want to go overseas and visit an no a- Arab country because we got nice stuff here in America. But his, his biggest blunder was abandoning those troops in Afghanistan, shutting down the oil, um, the, oil the pipelines, and the um, not renewing oil contracts, and then going to blame it on Russia. Yeah, that and, uh, you know, I, I would say – the Ukraine stuff is right up there. He's mad. Yeah. You couldn't try to screw up as bad as he has and be that successful. Well, I don't, I mean, but you know, like I said, we talk about it all the time. The black people that voted for him are the ones that killed me. You know, your life sucks. I'm not talking about all black people, but, but your life sucks so bad. You want to see everybody else suffer for you to feel good. That's liberal socialism one-on-one. Misery because loves company. Yeah, because you didn't succeed in life. You want everybody to be on your your, your equal equals with you. Do you know what that's called, um, Clay? Pathetic. It's called it's called, it's called spousal abuse. Oh, yeah. That's why insecure men abuse or mentally emotionally abuse their women because it ain't the necessary to break them down it's to put them on an even playing field. And heaven help that woman if she's more educated. And that's pretty much the liberal mindset. Yep. Yeah, you nailed it again, this brother. Great call. Uh-huh. Oh. Try to say you nailed it again this morning. Great call. All right, we got another call on hold here. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hey, Clay, how you doing this morning? Hey, brother, how are you? I'm doing fine. Once again, somebody called me in trying to push the old Fox narrative, if I'm not mistaken. So you're mad about Biden for pulling out. I'm not a Biden fan, but you're mad about Biden for pulling out Afghanistan. How long do you want us to be there? Well, you now can't, you're mad at Biden for sending help to Ukraine. Make up your mind, people. You can't, you can't, can't, can't have it both ways, man. I do not want to go to Ukraine, and we were not already. We were not in Ukraine. I don't. Ukraine can fight for themselves. I know I'm on an island on that sand on a, with a bunch of people, but I do not care about Ukraine. And, no, and you talking about people talking about going over there to Dubai? I mean, Dubai. What's wrong with Dubai? I mean, that's just like people talk about going over the British all the time, or London, or, or Germany. Well, it's not a. It's not. It's a. It's it's about it's about not supporting the the Saudis. We don't need the Saudis. We need to be. I, I, and I don't care about them killing reporters. None of that stuff bothers me. That reporter knew what he did, and he shouldn't have gone. You know, he knew there would be consequences and repercussions, and you know that's life in the big city. My my, my concern: we we could be drilling here and not need the Saudis for anything. And that's true, but the thing is, we've been. This country was using the Saudis in the Middle East since what the fifties now since the big oil embargo back in the seventies the uh, since the seventies. And this ain't nothing new. Both both political parties who won over there to the Middle East. Both political parties pay case to them. They ain't just uh, Democrats. This is Republicans and Democrats who uh, play case to the Middle East for oil. I mean, how you think the guy in Afghanistan? He got on there to protect the Saudi oil from death and storm. It wasn't about. Uh, Liberating Iraq people? They're about to keep us alone saying for blowing up the oil wells. Oh yeah. I mean I, we don't disagree on that. So how so why so how it could be a bad blunder when both political parties is, is, is protecting them? Well because 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 gas is four dollars and fifty cents a gallon right now with Biden and they're not doing anything about it. Well gas gas went up doing all uh, three fifty three I think I thought three fifty five is I've seen it. It's come down a little bit, but I mean minute, but better than nothing. That's true, but guys go up during all war time. Yep. You got anything else, Chris? No, nah, well, let me see. Well, that's about it. I'm uh, just saying, man, it's, it's both parties, man. All right. I think we got Derek back to wrap this up. Hey, Derek. I, I'm sorry, Clay. Let me correct something right now because he just fired me up on that one. First of all, Saddam was a, was a, was a, so Saddam was a bastard, but he was our bastard. We created it. Okay. First of all, Kuwait was not innocent. They were stealing Iraq's oil. What do you think fracking came from? That all started with Kuwait. Kuwait was stealing Iraq's oil. So when he set that oil on fire, he set his own oil on fire. 
people need to, y'all, look, wake up. And I'm not saying the Republicans have been right either. No. I don't care about none of them that go over there and pass out to the air. I am mad about the current situation. Yeah. <laughs> The current, I, I'm angry about the current thing, and this is the current thing. I'm tired of paying this much for gas. It is negatively affecting my life because it's made the price of everything else go up on top of the hyperinflation. Exactly. And, and, and this is the one thing. The gas prices are the one thing that we can absolutely fix quickly, to an extent, by having drilling opened up in America. I know it won't fix it overnight because you got to get up to speed, but my goodness, you know, this is like the one thing. It's like, do this. Do this thing and make it better. And they refuse to. For, they're actually talking about making it worse by yeah. taking electric EV into hyperdrive, I think is what John Kerry said. And, and Clay, again, on this, on, on, I, I'm, I'm going to say it right here. Both Iraq wars were lies. Even to a degree that the Afghanistan war was a lie because he was in Pakistan the whole time. Yep. They were harboring him, not Afghanistan. Pakistan was. So, Chris... Help yourself to a book, my friend, because what you were told about the first and the second Gulf War was not necessarily the case. Okay? Now, I'm not disparaging our soldiers. I just hate they had to go over there and do what, what the long Confederate soldier once said, fight a rich man's war, a, a rich man's war in a poor man's fight. Yep. Derek, I got to go, brother. Got to take the break. Uh-huh. Appreciate it. Love it this morning. Y'all are on fire. We're going to read a bunch of texts and all when we come back from the Guns of Gear text line. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. 103.9 WYAB. Play Edwards show this last segment of the first hour today. Today is a two hour show. I mean, it rolling it solo. Well, in studio anyway. Uh, this segment is going to be brought to you by Mack Hike, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Flowood, uh, located right there at 4000 Lakeland Drive at Airport Road. Uh, they will get you hooked up. Man, I had a friend of mine, Kristen, text me yesterday. said said um, her and her fiance or Looking to buy a Jeep. I gave him a salesperson over there his name that I know. And uh, I hope they are able to break bread today. But people are trusting Mack Hike, and you should too. You can check them out online at Mack Hike, Christ, uh, Mack Hike, CDJRF.com. Or just go to Google or whatever browser you use. Type in Mack Hike Flowwood. It'll pop up. And uh, you will not regret it. they got a huge selection of vehicles over there. And um, you can give them a call too if that is your preference at 601-821-1614 go see my buddy Corey mcdonald a morris brendan parker and hunter that is your management team over there they will get you taken care of today all right on the guns of gear text line we got some good text from folks here about my question of the day which was what was biden's biggest blunder so far uh, let's see here. We got executive order to stop drilling for oil and the Keystone Pipeline. That has cost us, the people, real money. And I could not agree more with that. Let's see here. Another texture says, worst Joe Biden when he said I do when being sworn in as the president. Woodrow, thank you, brother. Let's see. Uh my buddy Chip had texted in and said, uh, kind of off subject, he had saw his first grow house uh, here in Mississippi and thought that was kind of cool. Well, look, we got our top of the hour news break coming up. Y'all keep texting and keep calling the Guns and Gear text line 769 241 1944. The Mac Hiker Flowwood phone line 601 879 0002. We'll be back after the news. All right, welcome back in to hour number two of the Clay Edwards Show, the free range human show of choice, your daily dose of reality radio. It's right here on the Clay Edwards Show. This segment is going to be brought to you by any, many, miny, mo. How about my friends over at Watkins Construction and Roofing? A roof repair can cause you a lot of stress. Choosing the right roofing company to repair your roof is very important. Most contractors will try to convince you that replacement is the only way to go, and that, my friends, is not the Watkins way. They believe in an honest assessment that doesn't necessarily mean replacement. In most cases, all you need is a repair. So whether you have a leaky roof, you need chimney roof repair, flat roof repair, roof water leak, shingle roof repair, metal roof repair, or chimney flashing repairs needed, Watkins Construction Roofing is your go-to roof repair specialist. And uh, give them a call today for your complimentary Roof assessment at 
888-382-3333 or check them out online at WatkinsConstructionInc.com. Michael Deer and his team over there doing great things, always giving back to the community. I know I say that every time, but I mean it every time. They are always on top of giving back to the community and doing great things and sponsoring great events. And uh, we love having them here on the show. And uh, in the community, I mean, if they, if, they, if, they, if they didn't advertise tomorrow, I'd still be a huge fan of Watkins Construction and Roofing. I've grown up with Michael, known him for a long time, known a lot of those guys over there for a long time. Uh, great folks. Can't go wrong. All right. So the question of the day, what is Joe Biden's biggest blunder, his biggest mess up? It, uh, if, if you want to break it up into a two-part question, what's the most embarrassing dumb thing he's done, like falling off his bike? Shaking hands that weren't there, not just hands that weren't there, people that weren't there. Uh, is it his embarrassment of a child, Hunter, and the lying about all that? Is it making up words when he talks, which I, I don't want to sit in my glass house and throw rocks. I get a little tongue tied every now and then too, but I'm, I'm not the president. <laughs> so I, I'm allowed to do that. Uh, if you want to take it more serious, is it, is it, uh, the Afghan debacle? The pipeline, his making abortion his hill to die on, our clean energy, Ukraine. There's so many. He's he's. Can you tell me? I mean, real talk here. A serious question. Has not being biased at all. Has he done anything right? Like if you just said if you, let's just pretend that Trump. Made all those same errors. I, that's a terrible analogy. I'm not going to do an analogy for this. Just has Biden done a single thing that you thought was a good move since he's been in an office? I mean, legitimately, I cannot think of a single thing that he's done that I feel like represents me as an American of these United States. Not a single thing. Because I don't stand with Ukraine. I know that pulled a lot of y'all in. A lot of y'all like, eh, I don't know, man. I, 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 wars, we're supposed to fight them. I, I don't know. I am, I'm out on it. I am out. And, may, and I was telling, uh, I was having a conversation with a uh, kingfish yesterday, and I told him I, that I wasn't standing with Ukraine. And, and and I was like, you know, maybe it was any other country other than Ukraine. Any other country. I you might get me behind it. But just knowing all the corruption and and all that stuff that the Biden family is involved in over there, this is the one we're going to defend? No, I got a problem with it. All right, I think we got Lacey here on the Matt Kike of Flowood phone line. Hey, you there? Hey, there. How you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How are you? I think the worst thing that with Biden that has happened is he was elected. I, and also, I, I think one of the other... Worst things he could have done is open the borders and shut down the 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 oil field. Oh gosh, I didn't I even I didn't those, even think about I the mean, borders. I could Great sit call. Here and pull up a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, I don't really have that kind of time. But I, I tried to Google the top ten blunders, and they it hadn't been updated lately. <laughs> well, and then I I don't call him my president either because he cheated to get in. They cheated to get in, so. You know, you can add all that up and add to it. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm out on it, man. He has not done a single thing that I feel like represents me as an American. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Lacey, it's great to hear from you. Yeah, great talking to you. Call you have in. a blessed day. All, you, know, you know you always got an open phone line. Just call, call him when you're ready. All right. All right, have a blessed one. Um, on the Guns and Gear text line, my buddy Daniel text in it says dead on with ukraine preach thank you brother thank you i you know i I remember when the ukraine thing popped off everybody was like you are not allowed to have a different opinion i mean it's like everybody on the left and the right from the when i say everybody i'm referring to mainstream media and national politicians like we all had to be be on the same team for ukraine like no i don't know about that the same people that called me a racist, bigot, um, insurrectionist, transphobe, homophobe. Okay, maybe I'll be some of those. But they, uh, you're telling me, the same people that tell me I had to take a jab or lose my job. Th- these people, I'm supposed to now believe, the same people that told me the jab was 100% safe and totally effective. 
if you get the jab, you're never going to get COVID again, allegedly. It's what they said. Those people are now telling me I need to stand for Ukraine, but but, but this time we got to be on the same team. No, 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 no. Contraire, mon frere. I don't trust you. I am at a civil war with you people. We are not on the same team. America is not getting back on the same page. There is no great communicator, great healer coming down other than Jesus Christ himself that is going to get America back on the same page. We are not one country anymore. I mean, legally we may be, but we are not one country anymore. I Over, I would say, let's just say 50%, for the sake of arguing, 50% of these people in this country would suit me just fine if I woke up tomorrow and none of them were here. It would be a much better place. Traffic would be better. Taxes would be lower. Because we're not giving them welfare no more. There's much welfare. Anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But Joe Biden represents the other half of the country. And they're even mad at him. Well, that tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? They got 20% approval rating. So while we were talking a little earlier... I pulled up the statistics on how many people in America identify, identify, identify as LGBTQ. And this is in 20, I, this is, I've done this before on this show, but it's relevant to today. I hate revisiting content, but in 2020, Generation Z, which was people born in 97 to 2003, Fifteen point nine percent of them uh, identified as LGBTQ in twenty twenty one, and we don't have the twenty two numbers yet. I imagine this is going to be even higher. In twenty one, it has jumped from fifteen point nine to twenty point eight percent in one calendar year. That is, let's say five percent, five percent more people from Gen Z. That's your TikTok generation identify as some version or form of LGBTQIA plus pedophile BLM, some version of them, of the alphabet mafia. Um, in 2020, millennials, that's people born from 81 to 96, according to USA Today, 9.1%. 2021, it went up about a point and a half to 10.5. So what this tells you, and thank goodness, man, I fall down here and In Gen X, in 2020, only 3.8% said they was down with the LGBTQ. In 2021, it only went up from 3.8 to 4.2. So not even, basically a half a point. Um, Thank you, Gen Xers. But uh, what this tells you is our most impressionable generation, the youngest generation, is the one that's biting this stuff hook, line, and sinker. Their grooming is working. Let that sink in. This fight that we are currently in, this civil war that we, that the Christians, patriots, and rednecks, Kim, I had to borrow it. Christians, patriots, and rednecks are currently in against the LGBTQIA plus pedophile BLM alphabet boy mafia. This current civil war that we are in with them, good versus evil. They're winning. They are winning. 20.8%, a 5% jump from 2021, from 2020 to 2021. Let that soak in. That's why the Madison moms and the Rankin County moms and the Patriots that are raising hell at these school board meetings are doing what they're doing. Going to every school board meeting. Even the... What I love is even the homeschool moms are going to the school board meetings. I love it. But we've got to be more of us. And I'm talking to myself. I'm looking in the mirror. There's literally a mirror in the studio. I'm looking right at it, pointing the finger at myself. Clay, you gotta you gotta do more. You gotta do more. Getting up at 5 a.m., driving 45 minutes to Flora, 45 minutes back home, then getting my work day started and getting up here and doing my show prep. All this ain't enough. I got to do more. I got to hold myself to a higher level of accountability. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I I don't always know what more is. But we're going to figure it out. 
I want to hear from you guys. 601-879-0002 is the Mack Hike of Flowood phone line. The Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. Got a couple texts here on the Guns and Gear text line. and I'm not sure who is calling me on my cell phone during the middle of a radio show. You must not know who I am. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, Daniel says, uh, the war in Ukraine is a money laundering scheme. Send billions to Ukraine while politicians here cash checks. Yes, sir. Could not agree more. Josh texts in, uh, and as Guns N' Roses sung, there is nothing civil about war. And let's see here. We've got some more text. Uh, so I'm bouncing back and forth between my my, my actual cell phone number to the uh, studio number here, but it says, um, how much are Mississippi taxpayers paying for the thank you, Dr. Dobbs billboards on Lakeland Drive? I have not seen those yet, but I wonder that is Mississippi paying for them or is some, some, um, pro uh, vaccine company paying for them. I need to check into that. Thanks for letting me know about that. Let's see here. Uh, Miss Sylvia says, I can't stand to watch him. He hurts my stomach, and I feel like it's an invasion of my mind. She is referring to Joe Biden. All right, look, we're going to take a break real quick. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show on WYAB, and we'll be right back. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back in to The Clay Edwards Show. This segment is going to be brought to you by Guns and Gear, located right out there at 1716 Highway 51 North in Madison. Almost to Gluckstadt there. I consider that Gluckstadt, but who am I? Uh, you can check them out online at gunsandgearms.com. And I got the website pulled up here. I pulled it up during the break, and I was just kind of browsing through. Man, they carry some really nice stuff out there. And I never talk about the brands and whatnot, but I'm sitting here looking on their, their website. You can shop online as well. Uh, they got the 6-Hour P322. That is an amazing pistol. They've got Beretta, Tika, Daniel Defense, Glock, Ruger, Six Hour, Smith and Wesson, uh, Walter, Walters. Um, so, the oh man, they've got it all. They're the home of No Limit Ammo. Go follow them on Facebook at Guns and Gear. Uh, Hunter shares the deal of the day every day. There is always something really cool. Uh, save you some money. You never know. You may see something you didn't know you had to have till you saw it. On Guns and Gears, deal of the day. That is uh, typically what happens to me. <laughs> so get out there and shop Guns and Gear. You can shop them online at gunsandgearms.com. Okay, look, let's shift gears for just a second. We've been on a roll talking about uh, Civil War and Joe Biden's biggest blunders. Let's, uh, let's shift gears for a minute and... And talk about something good. (laughs) It's a complete change of pace here. But Deion Sanders, man. I I tell you what. I got to say when I'm I'm wrong, I'm wrong. When I'm right, I'm right. And I was wrong on Deion Sanders. I thought, I didn't think it would work. He had not been a, he had not been a head coach. I just didn't think it would work. What I did not take into account was what he was able to do for the culture at JSU and the accountability. And the the swagger that he brought to the program uh, nationally, and it has been an absolute game changer. And I think you know, I, and I, I think you had a big shift happen simultaneously. He got it kind of lucky in this sense. I don't, I don't want this to sound bad, but the George Floyd incident put a lot of light on HBCUs and black culture and everything, and uh, they saw it saw a big shift in popularity. And and black folks want to stay in, in in HBCUs instead of maybe going to your uh, SEC schools and stuff of that nature. So I got lucky in a sense there too. And then the NIL deal was huge. So the timing was really great to have a guy like Dion go to a place like JSU. And then it's also you know got the biggest stadium in the SWAC, still in Jackson, which is a huge city comparatively speaking to a lot of these HBCUs. Um, Dion has decided to donate half of his salary, which of course I got outkick.com pulled up here with the story. Uh, Sanders yearly salary to coach JSU is worth 300,000. That's just his base salary before any bonuses and all of the stuff he has. Um, so, but long story short, he's donating 150 grand to help the Tigers finish the upgrades on their indoor practice facility. 
and their football facility and all that. I think that is awesome. I, I just want to throw that out there. I think that's putting your money where your mouth is. I mean, we're ta- I know we're talking about a guy that makes a lot of money and all that, but a lot of people make a lot of money and they don't donate half their salaries back to their program to see it evolve and, uh, and expand, you know, that is taking ownership and I'm, I'm down with that. I'm cool with that, man. Uh, shout out to, to Dion. And, um, I know they're expecting big things this year. They're even talking about, um, they're exploring their opportunities to move up to, uh, FBS. I believe that's what I'm saying. I believe I'm saying that right. And actually join a, a, a non HBCU conference. So, uh, I think that would be awesome. I have n- nothing negative to say about any of that. I think they're doing some great stuff down there. I, unfortunately, <laughs> it's in Jackson. <laughs> I know, the, obviously, the name's Jackson State. Unfortunately, it is in Jackson, and Jackson is a cesspool of death, crime, and ignorance and corruption. But um, that is a shining star uh, in the uh, in, in a hellhole. <laughs> I don't have a nice way to say it. I'm sorry. But uh, anyway, shout out to Dion. Great work there. Looking forward to see seeing his, him continue to be successful at Jackson State. All right, now back to the bad stuff. Back to the culture war. In my promo for this show, it says, fight for the soul of America. And that's what the Civil War is. It is a fight. It's a civil war for the soul of America. And it just constantly feels like the evil side is winning. Now, we get our victories, but it feels like the evil side is winning. They have all the mainstream media is on board for them. You know, just everything. Well, here is um, billboards are going up around Jackson promoting access to abortion pills. This story is on WLBT. Uh, It looks like CJ LaMasters did the story here. Let me cue it up real quick. Turn my knob up here. This is CJ, CJ LaMasters with WLBT discussing abortion billboards in Jackson. Out of state groups are stepping in to try and spread word about. There we go, right there from the very beginning. Out of state groups. The abortion pill. And we're going to show you the 13 states here that have some form of trigger law, including Mississippi. Our Courtney Ann Jackson explains how some groups are looking for the loopholes. Mississippi's last remaining abortion clinic closed less than two weeks ago. Now the pro-choice push has taken on a different life. That will not be the final word. You know, you, you can ban abortion clinics, but you can't ban information. And that's where Mayday comes in. If you're traveling down parts of Highway 49 in Richland or I-20 in Jackson, you may spot one of these from the national nonprofit. They're rotating on the digital billboards. The billboard says pregnant, question mark, you still have a choice. All with the same message. Pregnant, you still have a choice. We're a, an education nonprofit that spreads information about safe, effective abortion pills so that everyone, you know, in Mississippi and in all 50 states can have access to the best information to be able to make decisions about their own reproductive health. But Mississippi's trigger law is currently in effect, banning most abortions. So the group is linking to resources that can help with workarounds to access. You can set up a mail forwarding address in a state where abortion is legal and sign up for these safe, effective abortion pills um, and get them sent directly to your home. Um, You know, at Mayday, we don't provide legal advice. We encourage everyone, if you visit our site, we link at the top to the Reproductive Health Legal Line where you can get that information from experts uh, in the reproductive health space. We provide information, um, and we hope as many people as possible can get it. Governor Tate Reeves was asked about abortion medication during a national interview earlier this month. If abortion is illegal in our state, which it is, then those medicines will not be allowed and and they will not have a license to practice in our state. We requested additional comment from the governor and the attorney general's offices about the legality of mailing the pills into the state, but have not received a response. Courtney Ann Jackson, three on your side. All right, so what do y'all think about that? You know, it's kind of like the trans billboards that were popping up, the trans kids belong billboard. and the, the, oh, Dang it. The only place your trans kids belong is at home. Keep that crap away from other kids, poisoning other kids' minds. Good Lord. Please. You know, if that's what you want to do, homeschool your kid. Trans kids belong. 
abortion pills by mail. I mean, and, and, uh, excuse my ignorance, but if anybody out there knows, please let me know. Are these abortion pills the same thing as Plan B? Because I thought that Plan B was still available. Are they are, are they eliminating the Plan B pill also? Or is this is this abortion pill by mail here? Uh, some kind of toxic chemical that that turn. I don't want to discuss it. You know what I'm trying to say? Kills your baby. Because Plan B is a different thing, or, or is it a different thing? Should I say? Give me a call. Let me know on the Mac Hiker Flowwood phone line, 601-879-0002 or the Guns and Gear text line, 769-241-1944. I would like to know what you guys uh, have to say about that. Um, Kind of running through here a little bit. I tell you what, let's go on and take our next break. We're only about a minute away. When we come back, I, I, I wanted to hit the Emmett Till stuff yesterday, ran out of time. We're going to owe it. We, we owe it to to how much work we've put in on this show discussing the Emmett Till case to put a period at the end of this sentence. So we're going to do that right here on the other side of this break. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show, 103.9 WYAB. And to The Clay Edwards Show, this segment is going to be brought to you by Kimberly Harrelson over at Next Home Realty. Listing, selling, or buying a home, it's easier than you may think. In fact, it's just a click away when you work with Kimberly Harrelson at Next Home Realty. If you're looking to move to or from the Jackson area, then Kimberly Harrelson is the agent that you'll want. She knows how to negotiate the best price, buying or selling. Kimberly Harrelson will help you make the right decision with your home. Check out Kimberly's listings. They're online at KimberlySalesMS.com. That's K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-E SalesMS.com. Or check her out on Facebook, Kimberly Harrelson at Next Home Realty. Just type that in the search bar and it will pop right up. Um, before I jump into the before I jump into the Emmett Till stuff, I was looking on Twitter and y'all know the monkeypox thing. They're saying that thirty percent of the entire monkeypox outbreaks are in New York City, and uh, as Salty Cracker says, I believe the other seventy percent has to be San Francisco. <laughs> but um apparently they're doing monkeypox vaccines in New York and uh salty cracker shared a shared a video. He retweeted something and it's viral news, New York and it says hundreds line up at pop-up monkey monkey pox vaccination site in Brooklyn, New York. And salty says zero testosterone in this entire line. And my goodness, it, it I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to retweet this. You can go to the Save Jackson Twitter feed. That's at Save JXN and uh, see it for yourself. The, every single guy might wear might weigh a buck oh five. They're all wearing some version of Daisy Dukes. I've only seen one girl in the entire line. And y'all know how this is spread. It's spread, among, it's spread between gay men with open sores at the end of the day. And uh, the, the hyper-sexual, hyper gay population in New York is lined up in monkeypox fear. <laughs> good. Good. That's all I have to say about that. All right. This story is from WLBT. Uh, Attorney General Lynn Fitch says they will not be reopening the Emmett Till case. And this is the family's, um, this is the family replying to the decision. Associated Press, Mississippi Attorney General's office is now saying it has no plans to reopen the Emmett Till case. This comes after an unserved warrant was found in LaFleur County just last month. Our Quentin Smith speaks with Till's cousin about the AG's comments, and he joins us now in the studio with more on their reaction. That's right, Maggie. So despite this unserved warrant being found, the AG's office says there's no new evidence to open the case back up and prosecute Carolyn Bryant Dunham. It's news that's not sitting well with Emmett Till's family. This has everything to do with the history of Mississippi, not willing to face the justice that this family so deserves. Strong words from Emmett Till's cousin, Priscilla Sterling. This after the state's attorney general's office says it's not planning to prosecute Carolyn Bryan Dunham weeks after an unserved warrant was discovered charging Dunham 
then-husband Roy Bryant and his brother-in-law, J.W. Milam, in Till's abduction in 1955 after the 14-year-old allegedly whistled at Dunham. This is the state of Mississippi. It's time for mindsets to change. It's time to challenge this racist history that continues to lurk this state. Following Teal's murder, Milam and Bryant were arrested, but both men ended up being found not guilty. Sterling says a petition is now going around trying to gather enough signatures, putting pressure on the LaFleur County District Attorney to serve the recently discovered warrant. We're going to continue to put pressure on Dwayne Richardson in serving that warrant convening a new grand jury to present all the evidence that the family have on hand. We have evidence more than just the memoirs that she has, her family has allowed to come out, a plus the arrest warrant with this information with the U.S. state senators being involved with the case for obstructing justice. Dunham recently released a memoir saying she did not want Teal killed. However, Sterling says she thinks it's just a tactic being used by Dunham to get sympathy. Why would you wait 67 years after the fact to come and say, oh, I didn't want anything to happen to him. I don't want to hear that. That's irrelevant to me. We're going to deal with the issue at hand, and that is for her to be arrested. Now, we reached out to the AG's office as well as the LaFleur County District Attorney, Dwayne Richardson, who would be the person in charge of pursuing the case against Dunham. At this time, we are still waiting to hear back from both offices. Quentin Smith, three on your side. All right. What do y'all think? Should the attorney general have moved forward with reopening the case? Again, I... I have to go back. I'm so tired of hearing about the race aspect. Uh, it's so divisive, and we talk about it so much, and we, we, we're hung on to these things that happened in the civil rights era, as terrible as they are. We've got to move past that. The, you're dredging up old racist stuff to be mad about, to be mad today because there's not enough racism to go around is uh, is very aggravating. But I believe that if there was a warrant should have been served and there should be closure for the family. I just don't like using the race card to get what you want. That's just my opinion. All right. On the Matt Hugger flow with phone line. Hey, you're on there. Clay, what happened to the people's grand jury that the new black Panther party said they were going to convene? I, I don't know. I missed that. I, I, I kind of, I kind of remember that. They are such a joke, dude. I am sick and damn tired of these black hate groups, man. That's all they are. They're black versions of the Klan. All the all the racism that they claim is still exists only exists on their side. Yeah, and y'all's mayor is one of them. Do what? And y'all's mayor Chuckway is one of them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, so free to land. You know, Hi, but in all serious, man, that woman, should, could she have been tried years ago? Yeah. Should she be tried now? Uh, it's not my place to say because I'm not an attorney, but if it was somebody in my family, I'd probably want to try it if you want to know the truth. Well, that's where I'm at with it. I mean, take all the race crap out of it. You know, that's where I'm at. If it was somebody in my family, I'd want to try it. But what, listen, I know Beckwood, I met Beckwood's grandson one time, and he was a piece of crap. There never was one. But, um, no, I'm sorry, his son. But make a long story short, what did if we tried that woman right now, the health she's in, that's why they don't want to try her. Because we'll be stuck paying the hospital bills. That's all it boils down to. When Beckwood, we tried him and he had cancer and he lived, what, two years? And it cost the state of Mississippi over a million dollars to treat him. Yeah, I mean, it, look, this lady, I, I don't know, man. I can make a million different arguments for both sides of the story. She, She's gonna get her. She's gonna get hers one day. She's gonna have she, to face her, her she judge is. before too long. So I mean, if you try, you do. If you don't, no, that's it, that's it's a tough one. It is, you know. Yeah. But, the, hey, have a good day. Hey, you too, brother. Thank you. Hit the nail on the head. She's gonna. She's gonna get her trial <laughs> sooner rather than later. You know, before God, she's gonna get that opportunity. To discuss to discuss what happened because he knows he knows what happened, so she's going to get that opportunity to talk about that when she gets there, and uh, it's not up to us to decide. 
Should she have been tried then? Yes, absolutely. Now, I still say yes. But I just don't, but I'm just so tired of it having to be about race. Can it just be about a little boy got killed and she was allegedly part of the reason why? I say allegedly because it's not proven. And the other people were found innocent. But I would tell you what, criminals quit writing memoirs and and selling your stories to magazines after you get off killing somebody. Telling them that you did it or how you would have done it or whatever. Y'all are stupid. Why would you do that? My goodness. That is stupid. On the Guns and Gear text line from Sylvia, she says, no, it's a done deal. His family is joining the bandwagon of money for racism. That family needs to move on and stick and stick. uh, I'm sick of this issue of racism. It needs to be about the law, not race now. And, And that's the vibe I get to. I think that the family would benefit greatly from a new trial financially it would bring it back into the spotlight it would be another show trial for america to rally around and keep racism fired up and ginned up you know your benny thompson's of the world your chalkways of the world your al sharpton's jesse jackson's all these people of the world the right the, the the black for a living folks would would be all fired up they'd raise a ton of money on it and that's the part I can't get behind. But if we're talking about just the law here and doing what's right, there should be a trial. But but to see the people that would benefit from it nauseates me to no end. Am I allowed to, to, to fall on both sides of this argument? I mean, I don't know how else to do it. I got to go with what's in my heart and my gut. And it says, you know, you have a trial to bring closure to the family. But then I think about what the family's trying to do. People that never knew Emmett Till, you know, he was 15. And these are these people that are in their 40s. They were not alive on this earth at the same time. They're trying to benefit from this because they're from the same family tree. But at the same time, I have sympathy for them for what happened to their family. So, uh, Confusium. It, it's one of those hard, there's not, a, there's not a yes or no, right or wrong answer. You can make an argument for both sides. Let's go on and take our break real quick so we can come back and have a few more minutes extra to end the show today. This is the Clay Edwards Show on 103.9 WYAB. All right, welcome back in to the Clay Edwards Show. And uh, well, just as I was getting ready to read y'all a little news story, I see that we I believe we have Thomas on the Mac Hike of Flowood phone line. Hey, you're on there. Hey, you hey. know how you, you say the soul of America, what's that? What is the soul of America? Yeah. Well, you know, trying to be good, Christian-based country, God, faith, not killing babies, not killing each other, you know, not lobbing off our wee-wees to be, for men to become okay. women, you know, not teaching critical race theory in schools, you know, good good stuff like that, you know, putting Christ- yeah. uh, not tearing down statues. Right, I never heard of the soul of America. I never paid that any attention, but... I hear it on the beginning of your radio station. I think Joe Biden was saying that when he was running, we fighting for the soul of America, right? I don't know. I thought he said Bill back. Yeah, but I mean, Bill won his campaign slogan or whatever. Well, I mean, that anyway, Jackson's called the city with the city was soul, and we know this ain't got no soul. I, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about America. So a guy told me, a black guy, I was talking to him about you know racial issues and things like that, and problems, economic problems in Mississippi. He said Mississippi is not going to never change. Because they want it to be like that. Because it's Mississippi is the soul of America. Let me ask you this. What And I always it, thought about that. I I think about that all I said, what do he mean by Mississippi is the soul of America? They don't never want it to change. So I asked you a question right here. Now Lynn Finch, she was she's saying that she's not gonna prosecute that later. Correct. How do she have that much power? Don't the DA or LaFleur County supposed to bring that lady to justice, right? Well, or she overruled that. 
Yeah, you know, look, I don't want to get here and lie to you about about how the legalities of that work. I would have to get an expert on. But Lynn, since Fence said no, correct. But Lynn Fence ought to be ashamed of herself. She really need to walk around with her head down because you can look at Lynn Fence and tell something wrong with her. <laughs> and racism do exist in Mississippi as well as the United States, as well as this world. So don't try to play like racism don't exist and white privilege don't exist. Look at Hunter Biden all over the internet with crack. Tell you white. Hey, no, I'll tell you what. Okay. We 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 one hundred. I even did a video about that and called it. That, told, that's and, white privilege. It so absolutely. Oh, white privilege don't exist when there's no such thing. You know, people your age. It only generation. it only exists for white, white demo. It only exists white for white privilege. Democrats. That's white privilege a lie. Look at Hunter Biden. Yeah. Look at this lady, Carolyn McBride. She is about to walk because she's white. Let me just be straight up. I want to ask you. I want to. I want to ask you a question. Hold on. Let me ask you one now. Um. Are, how do black folks look at the Hunter by the president of the United States son who himself was a huge part of the crime bill that sent so many African Americans or black folks to jail, whatever you want to say, in the 80s and 90s? He was such a huge part of that because of crack. And here we are with video of him weighing out crack and smoking crack all over the place and he doesn't even acknowledge it and his son sits front row at the, pre, at, at, uh, the White House press conferences. How does the average black American feel about that? Mm. With, with, with all the credit I, 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 y'all took for elected that, Biden. But a lot of black people don't even pay attention to that. Just to be honest with you, especially black people in Mississippi. They don't pay attention to nothing. We got to wait for people, wait for Chicago to come down here in Detroit to help us here in Mississippi against y'all. Well, woke as hell, you know but why? woke as hell, but, uh, but, but why to sleep? Because they still plantation minded down here. And that's what's wrong. That's why I guess that guy said Mississippi is the soul of America. They want to keep a reminder there in these 50 states of how it used to be. Okay? So that's what we're fighting for, I guess, the Mississippi, you know. That's what I would think. We are, we are Operation I mean, Human I Shield. I the soul of America, especially today when they don't want – Basically, Lynn Finn may be supporting critical race theory. They don't want to talk about Emmett Till no more. You know, there's a lot of people on the conservative side that think that, that think uh, Lynn Fitch is a Democrat playing Republican. I don't know what she is, but I know hey, she's t- dead wrong. Thomas, I gotta go. got to go. Thank you. Case. See you tomorrow. See you all tomorrow.